if you're the proud new owner of the MetaQuest 3 or 3S going into 2025, then watch this video to the end because I'm gonna show you how to adjust the Quest's hardware and settings so that you can get the most from it and have the best experience possible when wearing it. And I'll also be uncovering some hidden gems that not everybody knows about. So if you're ready, let's jump into the Metaverse. Where? We can load anything from clothing to equipment, weapons, anything we need. Number one. So let's start with a couple of day one tips to get you up and running at full speed. And these are a little bit boring, but are super important. So let's do this quickly. Put your MetaQuest headset on and on the main screen on the taskbar across the bottom in the area of showing the time and the Wi-Fi and the battery, click on that. This takes you to your quick settings. And in the top right corner here, you'll see the settings icon. This takes you to the full settings page. Now go to general and on this page, you will see software update. Click on this and make sure you have the latest version of the software as it doesn't always do this for you automatically every time a new software comes out. So it's definitely worth checking from time to time and even more so right now because Meta have just released a patch that improves the graphics on the headset. Number two, now this tip will instantly improve the picture quality on the Quest. Go to the App Store on your phone. If you're on iPhone, search for an app called iMeasure and install it. If you're on Android, use the Glasses On app, and that's one word, Glasses On. Using these apps, you can get a pretty accurate readout of the distance between your two eyes. And this is an important bit of information, so definitely write this down on a note on your phone or on a piece of paper. And it might also be worth measuring your friends and family's eyes as well, because if you're feeling kind one day and you want to allow them to use your quest, it is kind of need to know information so that they can enjoy the experience as well. So now that you have your IPD Intel, you can adjust the lenses to the perfect position on the Quest. And with the Quest 3S, there's only three fixed positions. So with the headset on, you can slide the lenses in and out and you'll see what the three presets are. But let's say your eyes are a little bit over, or a little bit under one of the preset positions. Here's a little hack that not many people know about. You can actually slide the lenses very gently between two of the fixed points and they will stay there. So this way you can get it much closer to what your eye distance actually is. And a very good way to test if you have done this correctly is with the headset on and switched on, close one eye and make sure the eye that's open can see a sharp and crisp picture. Then switch eyes and make sure the other eye can also see a nice and sharp picture. If either eye is blurry, this might not be to do with the IPD. It could be because the vertical and horizontal positioning of the quest on your head isn't perfectly lined up. So make the necessary adjustments and check each eye again until you get it right. And once you have, make sure you lock your head strap in position. Number three. Now this one really should be top priority for you if you plan to log into your personal Instagram, Facebook and WhatsApp on the Quest. And even more so if you're gonna save your bank details on the Horizon store to buy games and stuff. So check this out, go to the quick settings just like before, go to full settings and here you'll see passcode and security. And on this page you can create a passcode to log into your device every time you put it on. And I highly recommend you do this if you don't want just anybody being able to pick up your headset and snoop around in your social media and read all your messages and even spend your hard earned money. So honestly, you should probably do it right now. What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! So let's say you wanna play the audio from your Quest headset to some speakers or a home theater setup that you might have in your living room. This is possible via Bluetooth. To set it up, go to your quick settings, go to your full settings, and then to Bluetooth. And then here you can search and pair as usual. Obviously, just make sure the audio device you're trying to connect to is in pairing mode first. But, and this is a huge but. Oh, oh, my, oh my God! God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Who did that? Seriously, you need to know that when watching movies and videos and gaming when paired over Bluetooth, in a lot of cases, and it does depend on the device, the latency, the audio lag is not gonna be perfect. And in the worst case scenarios, it can ruin the experience entirely. And I have been told that Meta are working on a patch for this, but for now, there are four solutions that I have tested and can tell you actually work and will solve this problem. Number one, you could grab a USB-C to Bluetooth adapter. And I got this one from Aventry for 20 quid on Amazon. They haven't sponsored this or anything. It literally just is a good device for this and it's not too expensive. 
And this supports all of the Bluetooth codecs as well as aptX and aptX lossless, which supports high-res audio over Bluetooth. So using this to connect to Bluetooth speakers and home theater systems is a very good solution. The second option is to use headphones that support audio over USB-C. For example, the Sonos Ace headphones work really well with the Quest with just a single USB-C cable between the Quest and the headphones. Now option three is to use earbuds or headphones that do support Snapdragon sound. And I know this works well because I tested the Bowers and Wilkins PI8, which do have Snapdragon sound. And the reason this works is because the Quest headset actually runs on a Snapdragon chip and that same chip also handles all the connectivity, including the Bluetooth. So using a Snapdragon sound device will give you virtually no lag when watching movies, but you might notice a little bit when gaming. And if you are a gamer, this is absolutely the best solution for you. Use a gaming headset with a USB-C Wi-Fi dongle. I tested this with my Steel Series gaming headset and it works perfectly. And there's basically no latency at all. And also the head tracking audio works perfectly using this method. Now, before you ask, I did try the standard Apple USB-C to analog adapter with wired headphones that didn't work at all. So those are the four best solutions right now. Number five. All right, this is just a quick tip and it's more of a need to know than anything else. So when you're on the home screen and you're navigating the windows, some windows can be enlarged and some cannot. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? For example, the web browser can be maximized and you can simply do this by grabbing the corner of that window and dragging it outwards. And you'll notice other windows like the settings page and the horizon store cannot be maximized in that way. But there is another way to enlarge certain windows without dragging the corners, but it's a bit different. So check this out. Let's say you're watching a movie using the Quest web browser. For example, there is a feature here called theater mode. And you'll know when you're able to use it because at the top of that page, you will see the icon with the arrows pointing outwards. And when you click on this, it enables the theater mode and it will dim your surroundings and make the screen huge like you're sitting in a theater. And when you're in this mode, this unlocks a few more options that you can make use of. So clicking right here can curve the screen and kind of create this panoramic display instead of the classic flat screen. And in theater mode, you can grab the corners and adjust the size so that the entire screen fits within your field of view. And also at the bottom of the screen, you'll see this option called projection mode. Here you can enable the 3D mode. So if you are watching content that is in 3D, this will piece it together and create that 3D effect. And it's actually surprisingly good in VR. And you can even emulate VR using 2D content as well if you want to. The results are kind of hit and miss, but it might be fun to play around with. So definitely test it out. So here's an exciting new feature and a bonus tip for making it halfway through this video. And a little disclaimer, this only works with Windows 11. So if you're using an Apple Mac or an older Windows PC, feel free to skip to the next one. This one is a little bit technical and there are five steps to it, but I'll keep it as straight to the point as possible. So number one, within the MetaQuest headset, jump into your settings, general and then advanced features. Here, switch on the pair to PC with Microsoft Mixed Reality Link. Number two, staying on the same page, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see the switch to enable QR code scanning. Make sure this is on. Now go to the PC that you're gonna use and download the Meta Link app to your PC. If you've already used this in the past, you will need to delete your headset from it first and start fresh for this to work. Number four, open up the Microsoft Store on your Windows PC and install Windows own official Mixed Reality Link software. And you can check the spec requirements here as well to make sure your computer can run it. Once you've got this installed and fire it up for the first time, it will create a QR code. Now reboot your Quest headset and open the remote desktop app. Just like before, if you previously paired your headset to a PC and it's appearing here in this window, hit the three dots and remove the PC from the Quest headset. And again, start from scratch and add it as a new PC. And this is important because the Quest does need to install some new software, which isn't that easy to find manually. So now when you add the new computer, it will download the necessary software to the Quest. And now you can just follow the steps to scan the QR code and link the Quest, but this time with Microsoft's new Mixed Reality Link. So once this is up and running, whenever you look at your keyboard, you'll see the little option hovering over it to quickly link to your PC with just one click. A little side note, if you do have RGB on your keyboard and it's really bright, it can actually disrupt this from working properly. 
I found that when I switch the RGB off on my keyboard, it works every time. And once you click this button, the Quest takes over from the display that you're currently using or displays and creates a huge screen that can be resized. And you can add two more monitors to your field of view and resize them. And you can even use theatre mode like I showed you in the previous tip on any one of these monitor screens. So I can see this being incredibly useful for you if you mainly work on a small screen or a small laptop. And let's say you do have a small but powerful laptop, you can literally be anywhere and create an incredible multi-screen workstation anywhere you like pretty much as long as you've got Wi-Fi. This for me is one of the best new additions to the MetaQuest when it comes to productivity. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. All right, so when you boot up the Quest, you can have three floating windows and they're kind of locked together with the dock acting like a kind of handlebar to move them around. But let me show you how you can snap them out of the lock position so they can be moved around individually and how to snap them back in place. And I'm showing you this because this really frustrated me when I first got the Quest. So to unlink a window from the other two, just grab it at the side, not from the corner, and bring it away from the fixed spot. And you'll know when this has happened because you'll see this light gray window position behind where it was fixed previously. You can now move this window around and resize it and place it wherever you want and it will stay there as long as you don't leave the room. And you can do the same thing with the other two windows as well. And actually I tested this out and I managed to open seven windows all at once. So three locked in place and four floating ones around the room. Now, when it comes to locking them back into the universal menu positions, all you need to do is grab that window, drag it back until you see the light gray frame turn dark gray and then let go and it will just snap back into that fixed location and then you can move it around again using the bar beneath the dock. Now this one's very basic but very important. If at some point you become disorientated and you've opened up seven different windows and they're all over the place and for some reason you're finding it hard to find your dock or even if things are out of line within a game, all you need to do is just hold the meta button, keep it held down and that will get everything lined up perfectly in front of you again. Okay, here's something you should definitely do once you figure out what what you're going to be using the meta quest for the most so the task bar or the dock aka the universal menu that you have on your home screen this houses five apps permanently and then on the right side of this you have the most recently opened apps which will just be dynamic but what i want to show you is how to customize the fixed apps and how to unpin the ones that are there by default so in order to do this you must open the all apps page which you can do by clicking this little icon on the far right corner of the dock now locate one of the apps that's permanently locked on the dock right now and hover over it and you'll see three dots right there click on that and then you'll see the option to unpin it so now you've freed up a space on the dock to pin one of your preferred apps of choice to do this just find the app that you want to pin on the dock just like before hover over it hit the three dots and you should see the option to pin it and it is as simple as that and here's a little bonus trick when it comes to opening and closing apps if you click on an app with the trigger it will just bring it up automatically in an empty space but if you use your second finger for the inside grip button and open an app you can actually grab the app and open it where you want it to be anyway moving on so saving time is important and here's a couple of easy ways to do that go to your settings go to virtual keyboard and here enable swipe typing now instead of having to key in every single letter for every single word you can just hold the trigger down on the first letter and then drag the cursor across all of the letters of that word in one motion and it will figure out what word it is you're trying to spell and it's actually very good at this. And another way to save time is to use your voice to spell out the words and you can do that just by hitting the little microphone icon. Now let me show you how to find free games the legal way and also free game trials. Open up the Horizon Store which looks like this. Using the search bar type in the type of game that you want to play and here's a great opportunity to test out your new swipe typing skills. Anyway once you type that in the games will pop up and at the top of this page you will see a filter button here for apps and games so if you click on that it will refresh the page and now you should see the free filter pop up at the top click on that and there you go you have all of the free games and game trials that match your search term another maybe easier way to do this is actually to use the meta horizon app on your phone use the search bar at the bottom and here you can actually immediately go to the free filter and see more games in one place and you can actually see which free games are trending for the particular month that you're in okay so you've made it all the way to the end of this video and of course i wasn't going to stop at 10 
because I've saved some bonus tips for you guys. And this one's specifically for the Quest 3S. So you might think that the mixed reality button on the bottom of the headset is the only way to enter mixed reality, but there's actually two other options. On your navigation bar, you'll see this little icon here, which looks like a pair of goggles. This will toggle on and off mixed reality. And just like the Quest 3, you can in fact just double tap the right side of the headset to switch between mixed reality and VR. Here's another one. Now you might be watching this and wondering how did I capture all of these clips from inside the headset? Well, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is open up the camera app, which looks like this. Here you have the option to start recording, snap photos and go live. But before you do any of that, you do need to check out the next tip first. But before we get to that, you should know there are a couple of shortcuts for taking photos and starting recording without having to come back here every time. So in order to do this, just hold the meta button down first, then tap the trigger once to snap a photo. To record, it's pretty much the same thing. You hold the meta button down, but then you hold the trigger. You keep it held down until you see a red dot pop up within your field of view. And this indicates that you are in fact recording. And you can use the same method to stop the recording as well. But most importantly, remember you have to push the quest button first, then the trigger. Now, the reason I said don't do any of that before this is because I'm gonna show you how you can make your recordings and live streams even better. So jump into your quick settings, then your full settings. Go Go to camera. Now within the camera's menu, turn your stabilization all the way up because there's nothing worse than shaky footage. Also, if you plan to share these videos on YouTube, for example, you might prefer to change the ratio to 1920 by 1080 as opposed to the defaults. Also, if you're gonna be sharing gaming footage, I do recommend changing the frame rates to 60 frames per second. That way it will just be a lot smoother. And also while you're here, change the bit rate to 20 megabits per second. This will increase the quality of the recording. And here's another tip. If you are like me, limited to a small play area, I found that sitting in an office chair is a great way to play games without knocking everything off the shelves and accidentally kicking the dog or punching the missus. And if you are gonna be using the MetaQuest sitting down, then you definitely need to know about this. Go to your settings, go to accessibility, and here go to mobility and enable adjust height. This will bring everything more in line with your eyes. So you're not constantly looking up or looking like you're very low to the ground within games. And it makes such a huge difference. I actually played a lot of Batman Arkham Shadow with this off. <laughs> As soon as I turned it on, I was kicking myself that I didn't find out about this sooner. And while we're on this menu, there's a little fun setting that you can play around with if you want to. You can actually make the Meta Quest show your avatar arms instead of just your hands if you want to. And another little bonus tip for you is in regards to battery life. So the runtime on the headset itself is pretty good, but it can be better if you plug in an external battery pack so you can get small ones, or you could do what I did and get a head strap that allows you to add an additional battery on the back. And this one here is the Bobo VR head strap. There's a couple of versions of this. You can add a magnetic battery to the back, which pretty much doubles the runtime on the headset. And then you can also buy additional batteries. If you do want to check out this particular headset, I'll leave some Amazon links beneath this video so you can check out the latest prices and of course Meta do have their own official one of these as well so you can look at that as well. Now I did make a list of more than 30 tips and tricks for the Quest and there is new stuff in the pipeline like Meta AI and voice commands and all this kind of stuff so if you want to see more tips and tricks for the Quest 3S make sure you subscribe with notifications on and I was going to show you guys how easy it is to cast what you're seeing inside the Quest to the big screen so that the other people around you won't get jealous when you're playing but I did make an entire video all about that and there's actually quite a few different ways you can do it that thumbnail is on screen right now if you want to check that out if this video was any use to you at all a little thumbs up would be appreciated and if you just subscribed you are now one of the finest subscribers known to man and I will see you in the next one don't be late